My name is Melissa Schneider, and I'm the practice owner of Resolution Counseling Center. So I run a counseling center, and this is a staff of trained therapists who work with couples or adult individuals, teenagers, kids, um, helping kids who, uh, helping clients who come in with um, mental health challenges or just life transition challenges, stress, anxiety, grief and loss, that kind of thing. And so my job is to really make the entire business um, run well. You know, so making sure we're serving our clients well, that we're actually helping them, making sure we're hiring people who are great therapists and are caring, making sure they have the training that they need, um, looking at the kind of the, the money side of the business. Is it working well? How do we pay people? Um, and also being able to think about even just the practical things. Do we need to rent more space? Uh, you know, how many couches do we need? That sort of thing. Um, and so it's, uh, I'm a small business owner who's able to use her um, training as a therapist to open a business that made sense for my local community. I went into my undergraduate um, uh, life as a business major, which was just kind of a little random. Like I liked business, but I also just didn't know what else to choose. And then in my very first semester, I had a class in what is called human development and family studies. And I just loved it. You know, it was about like development and sort of like normal development, you know, um, things that can go wrong along the way, uh, families. and. I just was like, oh, clearly this is what I want to do. And so I changed my major in that first semester and that was my undergrad, human development and family studies, a little bit like psychology. Um, it wasn't like a term I'd heard before, but that was sort of how my college, um, you know, put that program together. And then I went from there into a master's degree in social work, which is one of maybe four or five master's degrees you can do to become a therapist. You, know, you, can, you can do a lot of things with social work, um, but my track was called a clinical track. And so, within a master's program, you would have the kinds of internships and the kinds of courses that would prepare you to be like the therapist in the room with a client, as opposed to like running, um, you know, like a program in the city or, uh, you know, doing like research or kind of other things that you could do with social work. Uh, and so after that, then you have to take a national exam, then you get an initial license, and then it's a little bit like when a doctor does residency, you have to accrue 3000 client contact hours under supervision. So usually you're doing that like in a job setting. Um, and so you're meeting with someone weekly, talking about your cases, getting feedback, learning things along the way. Then you take another exam uh, and then you are able to practice independently. Then you do three years of that. Then you can take a supervisor course and then you can supervise clinicians who are doing their 3000 hours. And so that is, I suppose, the path that I've gone through. So, I mean, I suppose I created the job that I have today. So that's somewhat convenient. Um, but along the way, I think it was, uh, it, the, the puzzle pieces make sense from this perspective because Whenever I would have a job, um, you know, sort of in my industry, I always gravitated toward roles where I could have some clients and I could do some operations or management or administrative stuff. Um, and so I actually got somewhat lucky. My very first job out of graduate school was a fairly small women owned business that provided counseling services and other support to the employees of companies. So, you know, like, um, you know, Bank of America would like have our services and any of their employees could call and get help. Um, and so I really enjoyed like kind of being part of how the business ran and then also being part of, um, you know, like actually meeting with employees and providing like help and support. Um, then um, I ended up living in China for a couple of years. Um, I didn't have a license in China. So I kind of went on a more creative path and I, um, I, wrote a book about the rise of romantic love and the change in arranged marriages um, under communism. And so I sort of learned a lot about like the Asian family structure, how relationships could be super different than they are in America. Um, and that just sort of helped me understand like a cultural lens over like what we might think of as normal or what makes people happy or that sort of thing. And so I think that helped a lot as a therapist just to see that different angle. 
Um, and then I also um, tried and failed to launch um, a, like a sort of online dating consultation service. Um, you know, so I think there I was I was like trying to bring relationships and business together again. Um, you know, I had this idea that like if people are dating and struggling, they would like pay our coaches to help them. But it really turned out that I was not interested in running a technology project, that I was really interested in like helping people um, succeed in dating and not like sort of have this sort of devastation and hurt and loss that you can kind of have repetitively if you're not being strategic about dating. So that sort of all evolved into becoming a couples counselor, really getting like extra training there, um, starting to work with couples directly, um, having my own private practice, and then opening um, the business that I have today. The weird thing about needing to have a master's to provide therapy is that it's hard to really get a sense of whether you'll like being a therapist until you've done like a lot of school to get there. Um, so I would say like one smart thing to do would probably be to find a couple of counselors in your local town, um, call them up, ask if they wouldn't mind talking to you for a half hour about their job and what it's like for them. Um, there's also ways to watch like recorded therapy sessions, you know, on the internet, if people are kind of demonstrating a certain, um, you know, skill that therapists might learn or might like even pay to get trained in. Sometimes they'll put like a full length therapy session on there. and so. Those are probably like as close as you could come to getting a sense of whether you would like doing therapy. Um, I would also say it's important to be someone who likes sort of the social science side of the house, like being a little bit interested in research, not minding writing long papers, uh, you know, enjoying like thinking about people and families and communities and that kind of thing. Um, you don't need to be good at math. <laughs> um, there's not a lot of uh, other than maybe some stats, you know, so I think it's a uh, it's you there's like a pretty clear set of skills that might like kind of you know push you in this direction um and then i would say just do some good research about which um, master's program to go into because they're all pretty different um and you can just come out with slightly different skill sets